Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we have two things to talk about. Um, first activity is going to be turning some steel on the lathe. I have uh, some mild steel right here and I'm trying to make a um, bar with a um, piece that's a little bit thicker on this side and on this side to adjust the level of my lathe. So, so it's kind of like a le leveling bar and you need to do this because uh, when you install the lathe on the table, the bed actually has a twist in it. So if the bed has twist, you're not going to get perfectly accurate um, cuts as you as you go along the stock. So the best way to do it is to take um, a cut on this side and then take and, and leave everything the same, put it on um, auto feed here, power feed. And as it, the cutter's moving along here, it'll take a cut on this side. And then you can use a macrometer to measure the uh, thickness on either end. And the idea is you want the thickness to be the exact same. And that would, within a thou or so, that would sh indicate that the um, lathe is perfectly leveled. If they're off slightly, in, a, in other words, if one of the sides is thicker than the other, then there's a book I'll show you and it tells you to tighten some of the bolts that um, connect the lathe to the, to the surface you're working on. So um, the idea is that you'll um, fix the tilt in the bed. So there's, there's a bolt here, and then there's a bolt on this side right there. And there's a bolt here and a bolt on that side. And Really, you just want to be focused on tightening these guys, um, and you you can uh, th there's there's a science about which one to tighten based on the thickness of either this side is too thick, and or, or this side is thicker. Then you would adjust either the front or the back. And the book I'm using to learn about this is Work Holding in the Lathe. Um, these are workshop practice series books. You can find them. Uh, online and there's a whole bunch of them this one is on work holding and there's a section here on 107 uh, page 107 on the setup so there's your chuck and you're trying to make a thicker piece about a quarter inch away from the chuck and then on this side um, would be the other thicker piece so that when your cutter goes across it's not going to uh, make contact with the the um, inside part it's just going to go straight across on power feed and then cut this side and from there you can tighten the bolts as I instruct so um, it talks about which one to tighten in reality you can kind of play around with it um, you know tighten one side and make another pass and then see if you've made the problem worse or better you know if you've made it worse then un loosen it and maybe tighten the front bolt You'll, you'll figure it out, but I'll, I'll show you, show you how to do that. Um, the other thing I'm working with right now is making these cutters. So, um, these are high speed steel blanks. And, um, what you do is you get these blanks and, uh, if you look at this side, they kind of come like that. And then you can grind them on the bench grinder into cutters. And then what you do, you mount those in your, uh, tool post holder right there and then you put it on the lathe right like that and then you, you tighten this down here and then it's firmly in, in the ready for, ready for work um, one thing that I'm not sure about is if my tool post is exactly perpendicular to the bed um, and I'm wondering if that's impacting my um, my cuts. So I'm going to have to do some more research to see if that's necessary. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll let you know what, what I find out. So the other thing to do to note about these high speed steel cutters is there's particular angles. So, um, this one right here, for instance, this is a three eighths inch thick blank and you can kind of see there, see here how it's, how it's ground. So it goes in the tool post like that. And it'll cut this way from right to left. 
And if we go back and take a look at how the angles are, there's something called rake angles and, and relief angles. And I'm still learning the proper angle uh, measurements. It's usually about 10 to 15 degrees. You can see there about 10 or 15 degrees from horizontal. And then you have to grind all the ends. So this one right here, if you look right there, it's ground back. And this is the point right here that's actually making contact with the work. So the idea is this point should be the one that's protruding and actually making contact and not this inside piece right here. So um, still working on it. You can see I tried this blank right here and I ground this side back right there, but the upper portion is not properly ground. So it's, there's something called negative and a positive rake angle. And I think I have to grind this the other way. So it looks like this one here. See how that's, that's like that. And this one is the other way. You see that? So I, I think I have to grind it kind of reverse of what I did, but uh, I'll show you how all that works. Um, so once you get it in there, you'll, uh, you'll kind of need to take a look at the curls that you're making. Um, and it can, you can use that to diagnose how you're, how, how well you ground your cutters. Um, usually these really tight coils are actually what you want. Um, and you don't want kind of the looser stuff like this, but you know, as long as you're getting some of these, these curls, it's, it's, it's usually a good sign that you're on the right track. Once you get really good with, with grinding your cutters, you can actually uh, grind them so that the um, curls will break. It's called a chip breaker. And that's actually more kind of more advanced um, once you get really good at grinding these down. It'll, you'll get more advanced and it's breaking the chips after, you know, you'll get some, some curls and then it'll break off. And that's what you want because if these get too long, like what I've done here is it can get tangled up into the, the lathe. And if it gets tangled in the chuck or right here, you could, you could really have a problem where things get jammed up. So, um, as long as you're keeping an eye on it, you know, you can stop the lathe and cut it, uh, cut, cut off these, these curls, um, or, or try to break them off by hand. Um, so it, it kind of works the, the way I have it right now. So I'll show you some footage of uh, turning and uh, working this machine. Let's go and find that here. measure it. Really got to work on my surface finish at some point. It's going to be a journey to learn all this stuff, that's for sure. Uh, 
Okay. So I am at nine, oops, nine and 16, just between 16 and 17. This side. Uh, this has some, it feels like it's a little bit thinner. Yep. So that side is 13, so I'm off by 3 thou. So this side right here is 3 thou, 3 thou thinner than that side. So I've got some twist in my bed. I'm gonna have to adjust one of those nuts and see if the cut is more accurate next time. Because you want, you want this to be at the same measurement on either, either end. So I'll do that, and uh, that's really there all is to it. You just keep going back and forth until you get it the right, um, this exact same thickness. What else I'm going to show is taking cuts on the in this inner piece right here, um, because you obviously want to take multiple passes of this so it's really thin, so that when you go and do your um, aligning, um, you can take multiple passes just like I did uh, without having to re. Um, cut the inner side right here. Pretty good chips right there, breaking off. 